As we continue to recognize Pride Month, a transgender woman takes us on a journey through her emotional challenges. On this Pride Month, Bobby, we are giving you a closer look inside the journey of a transgender woman who just underwent gender reassignment surgery. Yeah, Bob had a chance to speak with her, and he's here this morning with her story. Yeah, so her final surgery and treatment was completed just weeks ago. She tells me she's so grateful to receive both physical and mental and emotional support through this process. But still, she says there have been so many giant hurdles. Hi, Rivers. Hello. Hi. Come on in. Oh, it's so cute in here. <laughs> Okay, so first and foremost, surprise. Aww. A new apartment for 34-year-old Rivers Wilder Green, who was homeless months earlier. The nonprofit Second Chance Mission surprising her with a new bed, furniture, and a food stock fridge. We've worked with many different recipients, people who have lost loved ones to addiction, people who have overcome addiction, people who have been bullied and survived homelessness. And to provide a moment of joy in their day is really what we're looking to do. Oh my goodness, I'm so shocked. This is gorgeous. This is like way cooler than I could have asked for. This is really special. Thank yes, you. I'm well, so glad. Green found herself living on the streets while battling substance abuse. She came out as a trans woman in 2018 and turned to drugs after facing discrimination, bullying, and her own anxieties and fears. I thought I was brave and I did everything I needed to do, but the ultimate leap required with transitioning in the way that I was meant to, it's just, it, it requires like unfathomable courage. It's almost like, uh, you know, there's no there's no script or like place for trans people. Green is sober now thanks to tremendous support from family and friends. I am celebrating today one month sober from everything. And recently had gender reaffirming surgery. Despite the welcome help through her transition, Green says she's had to figure almost everything out on her own. Where everyone's safe and it doesn't get worse. The total amount of help required, it's just everyone's lacking. Every trans person is somehow like almost having to cut corners or just like behave in a marginalized way because we are marginalized. And I'm, I'm anticipating, especially in places like L.A., for there to be a trans-specific center. If all of these people who are trans require this laundry list of needs and the LGBT centers not fully fulfilling them, then like why isn't there a place for that? Yes, I now that she has overcome great challenges, Green says she's thrilled to pursue another dream. I want to be like a global pop superstar. I want to be singing songs that make people feel so brave to do their follow their wildest dream. We've got each other and our courage. She's released this song and is working with producers on an album, one she hopes will inspire others. I don't know that I've arrived anywhere, but I think when I'm closer to how I want to present and I can present this pop project, I think it's going to be even better than anything I could have imagined. And Green says the Los Angeles LGBT Center was a great resource for her. She received therapy from the center and her social worker helped her while she was recovering from surgery. We have more information on the Los Angeles LGBT Center on our website, foxla.com. We also have information on the Second Chance Mission, which gave Green's apartment a makeover. And you were saying your biggest takeaway was just the attitude overall, just being mm -hmm. so it, positive despite our, all the hardships. I, I found her to be very intelligent. She was very passionate. And then it was really the positivity that, you know, for a lot of us, we go through all these hurdles. And she felt like she had to go through this transition mm -hmm. first in order to continue on. But there was a pause in her career. And I said a lot of people mm -hmm. would go back and look at that and said, wasted all that time, time that I had to waste or, you know, to spend to do yeah. that. I could have had all, spent all that time on my career. And she says she wouldn't have done it any differently. Differently. She, she felt like this was all part of her journey. I love that. Thank yeah. you. Well, yeah, you are where you are based mm -hmm. on what happened, right? So yeah. that is one way to look at it. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, <laughs> otherwise, you do have a negative perspective on yeah. so much. But she's so positive through yeah. all of this. Yeah, you could she's tell. Been through a lot of, she's been through a lot. Okay. Yeah. Interesting story. Thanks, Bob.